I have not had a chance to review um, all of the files for today because there were so many. Um, so let me ask if y'all will give me short opening statements um, telling me where what the issues are and where I will find your pretrials. Um, so petitioner is which party? Your Honor, Ms. Throckmorton is the petitioner. Um, in our exhibit list, our proposed disposition of issues is P1. Um, thankfully, this case doesn't have a lot of moving parts. It's pretty simplistic. There's really just two issues. Um, the parties divorced in 2017, seven years ago. Their kids were in kindergarten at that time and in third grade. And now seven years have elapsed. And as is very common with children who are teenagers who are now 13 and 16, they have self-selected and they are requesting that they want to do a week on week off schedule. So the parties originally started discussing the week on week off schedule in the summer of 22. It did not happen. They continued to do the 225 schedule, which they've done for the last seven years. And then subsequently in the summer of 2023, in June, they resurrected that um, discussion again. And that was predominantly because both boys were asking for it, but it was really um, Thomas, who is 16 and a half, who was requesting that they do a week on week off due to coursework due to the fact that they had a lot of extracurricular activities. He's in band, he plays the French horn, he does a lot of uh, charity and service work. And so he was the one that was going to both of his parents, both to Ms. Throckmorton and Mr. Throckmorton, requesting this week on, week off schedule. And so that is what we want. We are understanding that the proposed disposition of issues for Mr. Throckmorton is simply to continue the 225. We don't believe that that is appropriate given the age of the kids. But the other issue is there were discussions about moving to it, but what, what was the exchange date? And we have always consistently wanted Fridays as an exchange date. And both the family therapist and Ms. Throckmorton are going to outline a bunch of reasons why Fridays are a better exchange date. Um, Mr. Throckmorton had said he'd be willing to do it if it was a Sunday exchange day. Um, we are arguing in the alternative that if it's not a Friday to Friday, Your Honor, that it would be a Monday to Monday. And that the Fridays are consistent with what they've already been doing under the 225. They've always done the exchanges after school on Fridays. And so we would like that to continue. We do have a small housekeeping issue because the family therapist, Diane Arnett, um, is testifying in another case this morning, also over Zoom, but she was supposed to be called in the morning. I don't anticipate that her testimony will be very long, but she has met with Thomas 26 times individually. She's met with Turner, um, the other son. She's met with him 21 times. She has met, um, you know, briefly with Mr. Throckmorton. Um, she's met a lot with Ms. Throckmorton. And so we think that her testimony is very relevant. And she is going to talk about how the boys were both asking for Friday exchanges and week on week off, that they attempted to discuss this with their father and they were shut down. She, will, she has the ability to talk about what it is that they're saying, that they're scared of their dad, that he humiliates with them, that he is not open to discussion, that when they continue to bring the discussions up to him, that he then um, he shuts them down and there's a consequence for it because they're talking back. And so they have made these attempts to have these discussions um, and it, it just hasn't gone anywhere. And so because of that, we think, you know, both on Ms. Throckmorton's testimony about why she believes that the Fridays are better and on the family systems therapist, that that will be enough. We did have a motion to confer with Thomas, but because Ms. Arnett is going to be available today, Judge Schleifer, I think that, you know, if they have put, when I say they, Mr. Throckmorton has put Thomas down as somebody that you should speak with. And so if that is his choice, then, you know, we will honor that, but we're not requesting for you at this time to speak with Thomas, his therapist can speak on his behalf. And then the only other issue is really a housekeeping issue, which is once you start the week on week off, you wanna have a reset provision for purposes of ensuring that nobody has three weeks at a time. And so after a, um, an extended summer of two weeks or after an extended Christmas, they also have like a special 4th of July clause and that's for a full week. And so anytime there's gonna be some long period of time that would exceed 14 days, we would ask for there to be a reset. I do think that we have an agreement on that piece, but maybe Mr. Samp can let me know if we have an agreement. I really think it's either 225 versus week on, week off. And, and if they have adjusted their pleadings or their arguments for today, then Sundays versus Fridays for the exchange date. And that that's all for today. All right. So it sounds like there's kind of three issues. One is the week on, week off request. The second is what day the exchange will occur on. Yes, Your Honor. That's granted. And the third is a reset provision. Yes, Your Honor. That's Got right. it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, Mr. Samp. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Skyler Samp from Win and Win, representing Mr. Throckmorton, who is present to my right. 
it's a pleasure to finally be in front of you, Judge. Um, just a few things before I begin my opening. Um, the opposing party filed their pretrial forms late. They filed them yesterday at 4, 19 p.m. And those were supposed to be filed at least three days prior to the hearing. So I'm going to object to those. And they filed their witness list and other um, exhibits roughly one minute before today's hearing. Um, those were supposed to be emailed at least two hours prior to the hearing. So I'm going to object to those and the witnesses that they intend to testify um, surrounding that. Um, Your Honor, regarding today's issues, this was this week on week off throughout the school year was presented to my client roughly nine months ago. Um, at that juncture, uh, dad was open to it. Um, mother's intent in, in bringing this week on week off during the school year was to appease her. It was for her benefit because her partner has children of her own and her schedule was week on week off. So he said, I'm open to it. Let's talk this through. And father said, okay, I'm going to talk to the children's guidance counselor and figure out which day during the weekend works best. He said, Sundays is usually what children do. Then he spoke to the children's coach. He said, which day works best with extracurriculars? They said, Sundays are usually what parents with week on week off do. Now this in conjunction with the fact that father's employed and mother's request that it be a Friday made no sense for him. It made sense for her because her partner is doing week on week offs on a Friday. He found no other reasoning behind this mother at the time and to our knowledge is not gainfully employed. So there's no issue there. Um, the children have extracurriculars, extracurriculars that can get them home immediately after school on a Friday or can have them come home at midnight on a Friday. That causes issues for transfers with the parents not having a set time, even if an order would provide a set time. Sundays made sense. Father travels during the week. And when if it's on a Sunday, although father can choose when he travels, that allows him to travel every other Friday. Whereas if it's not on the weekend, he can't do that. That eliminates an entire day of travel every single week for father. It simply didn't make sense. Now, you heard from the other side that mothers always wanted Fridays. That's not the case. In fact, as recent as yesterday, mother offered Sundays, father accepted, mother retracted, mother said, now I want Mondays without any rhyme or reason. Monday, once again, doesn't make any sense for the children. And then she amended her filing and she put Friday back in. So in a span of one day, mother didn't know whether she wanted Friday, Sunday, Monday, or back to Friday. Mother cannot find a valid reason outside of the fact that she said she may want to volunteer on Sundays as to why Sundays wouldn't work. Now, she did file a motion to have the children confer with you. I see no need for that. While my client may testify today that um, the children are indifferent and don't want to be involved, that's more the reason for us not to have them confer with you. We won't object to it if they want to push that, but we don't think that that's in the best interest of the children or even necessary. We think common logic would say that Sundays would likely be the most convenient for all parties involved, especially the children. Um, I don't see any need for therapists or anyone else to be testifying today. This is a very simple common sense issue. It's mother wants week on week off. Dad is okay with it. So I think we can take that issue off the table as long as it doesn't interfere with his work and Fridays interfere with his work. So frankly, we, we don't mind the housekeeping issue. We've never had an issue with that with the, the more than 14 days. So that's off the table. It simply comes down to what is logical. What can father actually do? And that's over the weekend, that's Saturday or Sunday. And Sundays are the only logical day for that to occur. Um, and that's, I, I think it's a fairly simple issue, Your Honor. All right. Um, well, Judge Greenberg, can I respond to, we actually filed our pretrials on March 4th. So we've had them in in a timely fashion. We simply amended because we discovered that that 4th of July was a full week. And so we needed to add and have clarification. We said extended and holiday, but we wanted to just um, ensure that, that that was clear. So that was timely filed. Also, Diane Arnett has been a family therapist for this family since the time of the divorce seven years ago. She was disclosed back in February, February 19th. So they have always known um, that Diane Arnett, we have been talking about what time Diane Arnett could be able to testify. So it's just um, inappropriate to say that and, and just blatantly untrue to say that we did not do our things in a timely fashion. But additionally, he sent us a calendar of his own work travel and we compressed it the minute we got it. And what Mr. Sam is saying is just untrue. He does travel about 26% of the time, according to his own calendars. And out of that 26% that he's traveling during his time, 
there's only 3% currently under the 225 that ever falls on what would be considered weekend time. And he normally would have his mother help him out with that period of time. So what you're really going to hear here is that this is about grievance. He is upset that Ms. Throckmorton left him for Trisha, her current partner, and that he, he does not agree with her sexuality. He does not agree with her religion. He has been angry for the last seven years. And all of his communication to her is full of anger and grievance and victimhood. And he simply does not want her, the children to have Friday to Friday or Monday to Monday because it's what Ms. Throckmorton wants. So this is not about the work schedule because his own exhibit actually shoots down his own argument. It is simply that if Ms. Throckmorton says black, he says white. It has to be something different because he is so full of intensity and anger at the choices that she made that broke up the marriage and where she is happy with her partner currently. All right. Well, so let me just ask, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Stamp, it sounds like you all um, are not opposing the week on, week off so long as the exchanges on Sunday, is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And you all um, don't have an e issue with the proposed reset provision? No issue. Okay. Well, that, that narrows the, er the issues some. Um, so I understand what they are. And then, um, Ms. Londrigan, you may call your first witness. Yes, Your Honor. My first witness would be Ms. Thrupplein. And who currently lives with you, Ms. Throckmorton, in your household? Um, currently, it is myself, uh, my partner, Tricia, um, my two sons, obviously, when they're here for their custody, and then her two children, Chase and Avery, who are of the same age, who are also on a custody schedule with her and her ex-husband. The same age as your children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And can you please tell the court the names of your sons and how old they are, what grade they're in, a little background information. Both boys are very active in both school and sports and social and community efforts. And at the time that you were divorced, um, how old were the boys and what grades were they in at that time? Yes, so when, um, when we divorced, the kids were six and nine. They were in kindergarten, third grade, I believe. Um, obviously very young. And I, I now understand that we're not arguing that the status quo of 225 continues, but still give the court a flavor for in this intervening seven years, how have the boys' lives changed in terms of their academic work or their extracurriculars, et cetera? Yeah. So when we uh, first uh, we had the divorce, uh, the life did not include as many layers and commitments as today. They um, school was limited to in-person activities and not as high pressure or online and autonomous that COVID kind of changed that. Um, activities were limited to a few sports or social options. Most of the things were on weekends and very limited in their time frame. Um, also, you know, we'll, I'll just stick to the kids. There's been a lot of changes for everyone in, in, in terms of just um, me and my, um, ex Mr. Throckmorton's uh, jobs and, and lifestyle too. But um, then, you know, now flash forward, the boys are very involved. Um, my oldest is very, very active in his school band, um, as well as various sports. He's a member of a service organization that has service hours and monthly meetings on, on Sundays. He, um, the band is not just the school commitment. They're a performance, a marching band, and they travel a lot um, for various competitions with heavy concentration in the fall. Um, and obligations to be at the Friday games. Um, and it also is a very tight knit community. So it includes a lot of activities um, outside of just the actual performance aspects. Um, conversely, Ta Turner is also very involved. His passion is football. Um, and he also participates in several other things. Um, and so life and their schoolwork has amplified dramatically. Um, it's a lot that they have to independently manage. Um, and obviously, as Thomas gets closer to college, the pressure, especially at a school like Vandergriff, is very high. And at this time, can you put up um, petitioner's ex exhibit number four? So I always like the court. Um, I'm sorry, it's number four, which is, are the pictures of the boys. So that the court. So in this particular picture, exhibit four, um, was that after church or after? Like, that was holiday? at a that was at a family wedding last year. Um, and that is, is that close? This is obviously closer in age to the objection um, relevance. Overruled. Your Honor, I'm, at this time, I just asked to um, admit four. I would also ask Anna to put up five, which is just, just another picture of 
my client and her children. All right. Any objections to four or five? One moment, Your Honor. Your Honor, we're going to object to any exhibit provided to us one minute before this hearing. So. All right. Let me hang on. So the I do ask that everybody upload their exhibits and exhibit lists. Um, I forget what it says, 24 or 36 hours or something like that before the hearing. That does make it easier on everyone. But I'm not going to entertain objections solely because you didn't follow the procedure that I laid out. Um, so if you have another objection, I'm happy to hear it. Uh, and I'm also uh, going to ask that in the future, uh, you all do comply with that request. But um, but I'm not going to uh, disallow any exhibits for that reason. So any other objections, Mr. Sam? Um yeah, I would just object to relevance, Your Honor. I, All right. I, I think the, the sole issue here is which day works for the family, not whether the family has a good, you know, whether they have a good rapport with one another. All right. Fair enough. Um, I, it does help me to have a picture of the kids that I am going to be uh, ruling on. So I'm going to overrule the objection and P4 and 5 are admitted. Your Honor, and I, I did um, want to say, you can see that our exhibit lists are both very short. We didn't actually do any discovery on this case because we thought that the case would be settled. We asked to go to mediation. We were shot down for that. And so, um, but ultimately, these pictures are simply so that you can see who it is that you're working for today. And there's not really much of anything else other than um, uh, Ms. Arnett's CV that we're gonna, that we already provided to them with our disclosures back in February. So going back, um, at what point did the boys without talking about hearsay comments, Ms. Throckmorton, at what point did the boys come to you and request a schedule change? How, how many years ago was that? It initially started coming up as they were heading into high school and middle school. Obviously those were big transitional moments, but specifically um, it came up as part of the conversations heading into this school year. Um, yes. And your understanding about the reasoning behind wanting to switch to week on week off was what? Um, as you know, I cited with the change in in our um, in, in in everyone's life, including and most specifically their needs of um, the growing independence, growing complexity of their schedules, just the frequency of things that were always occurring, and their own maturity um, and comfort with being away from each of us for periods of time, which was one of the reasons why we did two two five in the first place. Um, it became um, logical uh, and, and and necessary in their minds to not have as much back and forth. Um, and to be able to have longer periods of time to have a complete school week, et cetera, to be able to um, live their lives. And so you went to Mr. Throckmorton and made this request. And what was his first initial knee jerk reaction about um, his response when you asked to go to this new schedule? When I first brought it up as they were heading into high school, um, he said that the current 225 worked for him and that he would not change because of that and the fact that he had originally asked for week on week off and that you and I had insisted on 225 um, and so he was not going to change. And so for clarification, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, it, it appears that Ms. Throckmorton may be reading something. I'm not saying she is, but um, I just would like the court to instruct her that if she is reading something to not be doing that. All right. So I will tell you, Ms. Throckmorton, if you are reading something, then uh, Mr. Saint will have the ability to ask for a copy of whatever you're reading. So I'm reading a note that reminds me to be poised and to make it um, to be poised and professional is what I'm reading. That's what I'm continuing to look down at just to keep myself calm. All right. Thank you. Okay. So his first reaction was in the divorce, I wanted week on week off. You said no, so I'm not going to give it to you. What was his second reason for not wanting to go the week on week off? Well, he said that he said first, the reason was the existing schedule was working for him. Second, it was that um, frustration over the fact that I was coming back with the very thing he had asked for in the first place. And then he gave you a, another reason why he didn't like it. And what was that? Well, um, that was the first time this year. He um, when we went to it, he didn't object to week on week off. But when I suggested Friday to Friday, um, and it, it was tied to the, my reasons for wanting to do that being tied to my partner and her schedule versus the kids' needs. Okay. And then ultimately, what was the reason why he gave of why he was not agreeable? For week on, week off? Yes. 
the first time it just kind of died because it was just a non-negotiable with those two things. This time he was agreeable to week on week off as the conversations progressed where, and this is why we're here today, the detail of how that week on week off would be executed became the item in question. And so I think that this is sort of the linchpin for Judge Schleuber. Why is it that you, Ms. Throckmorton, believe that Fridays are better than Sundays for, like, I know that you've enumerated a bunch of reasons that you could walk the court through those reasons. When we went into this, I never in my wildest dreams thought that it was um, going to be to this level of conflict because we were already doing Friday to Fridays in the summer. And when the kids went from me to Todd on a weekend, that was happening in the Friday. And so there was familiarity and ex um, an experience that had indicated no problems to that point. That was number one. Two, um, when you look at the school calendar and the majority of holiday breaks and whatnot, they start on Fridays. So it made logical sense to me thinking about how, you know, with our holiday breaks and the holidays that are prescribed as part of our decree, that that would be a natural transition point. Um, the other part is it allowed the weekends to stay clean where the kids would head into a weekend, be able to relax with that parent and enjoy and take on their activities and then head into a full school week with that same parent, um, being able to head into that week and then transition to the next. Uh, the, the other thing is, you know, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for this. They do live in a household when they're with me with four other teenagers, two teenagers, is a lot, four teenagers is a lot, a lot more. And that schedule, when we all talked, their desire was to have that schedule align, if not alternate as much as possible, just because it is a lot of activities. It's a lot of motion. And their desire was week on week off, Friday to Friday to help align with all those things. And will you tell Judge Schoifer the quality of their relationship with Trisha's children? There are four very, very different kids. <laughs> um, there has been, you know, like any four teenagers you put together, there is good moments and bad moments, but generally there are, um, they are very cordial and accommodating to each other. They're just four very different kids. In fact, the two youngest, Turner and Avery, are constantly um, kind of coming up with trouble all the time, uh, given their similar personalities and friend groups. And when you <laughs> discussed the Friday to Friday schedule with um, the family therapist or the internet has mostly been meeting with the children, what was her thought about Fridays to Fridays versus Sunday to Sunday? Her, her uh, thought was that it followed both um, the, the, the lot that it was in the, the best. So, sustained. I'll ask Ms. Arnett about that in a minute. Um, what was your, um, what were your reasonings for the judge about why you believe Sundays do not work? Sundays had uh, several challenges to me in that first and foremost, it by its very nature requires both parents to be involved in a weekend rather than having it clean. So by the exchange happening on a Sunday, that means both parents are touching each weekend, which seemed at odds with the um, both what we had been doing and what was being presented to me as the reasons why um, Sunday through Sunday was a better option. Um, Sunday to Sunday would present lots of challenges when we are executing um, things like holidays or within school, which is right in line with what I just said. I also didn't see, um, and it's helpful to see Mr. Throckmorton's calendar now, but I also did not see how Sundays were going to add so much additional value in um, protecting a work calendar that is still free for the majority of a work week um, that it was worth, um, that it was that it was rational to choose that, which we had never tried before and was not in the flow of what the kids were familiar with. Let me just ask, what what time of day were y'all talking about doing the exchanges on Sunday? Same as Origi we do. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It was originally proposed three, but we landed on five. And I guess that's another um, question. Um, that the judge probably wants answered. We are requesting that the exchanges occur at what time on Fridays? Um, as soon as school uh, gets out, I believe is what we. And and then in the alternative, we were saying to do it on a Monday um, as opposed to a Friday. And what time were we requesting on the Mondays? At the beginning of school. And when you um, are arguing the alternative for Mondays, um, why do you believe you, you have your primary goal of getting Fridays, but if you did it on Mondays, why do you think the Mondays are superior to the Sundays? The Mondays allow for a clean start to the school week and the weekends to be clear and clean as well, and the boys to finish at one place and launch into the other. But really, my biggest reason for Monday to Monday was that was what Mr. Throckmorton originally asked for and after going back and continued to ask for up until recently. And so when I was looking to find some kind of middle, that seemed like the most logical choice.
And so I want to address one of the things that Mr. Samp says in his opening, which is, you know, negotiation talks are somewhat sacrosanct, but we did, we were at some point just wanting to reach an agreement on the week on week off. Why did you not have the peace to agree to the Sundays, though at some points you did have agreements about Sundays as opposed to Fridays? Um, listen, I, I do not like that we're here nor have any pride in that is this topic is, is here. I, it has been, as he said, a, a journey over nine months that has had a lot of twists and turns and why I could not ultimately do it is one, I truly believe it is in the best interest of the kids to be week on week off and to be Friday to Friday. That has also ping ponged throughout this discussion in terms of his um, desires. And ultimately the pain and the frustration that came in through our divorce has, has perpetuated a pattern of um, behavior and communications that make it very difficult to find a shared path, let alone one that is both respectful and um, comfortable. So that might be a little bit of out of order in the calendar, but do explain to Judge Soifer, um Mr. Throckmorton's feelings about the divorce. Ultimately, I am not proud um, of the way that our that the things that led up to our divorce and objection followed. calls for speculation. Um, that's overruled. I'll allow me. I'll allow each of the uh, parties to tell us their understanding of what happened. Um, Judge, I had an affair um, with my current partner that led, I mean, among other things that led to our divorce, but that was the, the kicking point. It was very painful. It was very public. It was very humiliating to all parties involved. I'm not proud of it. I have worked very hard to both apologize and to rectify whatever hurts I have caused, but the damage has been done. And it's been clear in that for the past seven years, those decisions have continued to be surfaced every time we do not agree on anything and have been um, continually referenced as a reason to believe that I am not to be trusted, that I am self-centered, and that I am rigid. And so the narrative or the belief has created a filter to which all decisions and communications flow. And I feel for the pain, but it is like being in an endless penalty box of um, that only impacts the children first and foremost. And, and to be clear, um, the divorce um, commenced because you were in a relationship with Trisha and that it continues to be who you were in a relationship with today. Correct. My um, my choice, both for the affair and the continued pursuit of my lifestyle and life choices, has been met with continued um, disapproval. And so, tell the court just a small flavor of the commentary that he currently gives you seven years later, um, in, in reference to this. Person. He can he um, frequently references the events of the past that led up to and around our divorce, as well as challenges that have occurred. Um, as you know, really, uh, my relationship has continued to recur to basically continue to um, accuse me of being a deceitful, self-centered, and rigid person. And what does he say about your sexuality? He has um, never disparaged me directly. But I'm going to allow this by way of background, and I allow your client to get into it as well if 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 they want. You may continue, Ms. Throckmorton. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, he has continually referenced my choice of both a woman and choice of partner as something with which he does not approve of and has even asked at several times to discuss things like my feelings on Pride Week and what I'm saying to the boys and whatnot because he wants to make sure that his views are known too and that they don't get confused. What has he said about your religion and your choices involving that? He has, because of my choice, made references to how do I call myself a Christian when I live the way I do and act the way I do. And so historically over the course of seven years, when you and Mr. Throckmorton had had dispute, disputes about other issues, not the week on week off, like ultimately how have they been resolved due to the fact that, that he has this anger towards you? I mean, it varies, but ultimately in the beginning I would try to concede it was you know we were both in an all or nothing I think um, mentality over time what has happened and that's certainly a reason why there's been so much back and forth here is there's just a constant back and forth and I say tomato you say tomato and it just becomes so exhausting that I just I, I either say enough or I just say yes because it, it's it's not um like I said, there's a filter with which everything is because of the hurt and pain and choices of the past it just becomes very difficult for it to be. And we and we even see 
we even see differently on conversations. I see them as very, um, very contentious. He says, we're just talking. And I'm sorry, when I'm sitting on the other side of a table crying, that's not pleasant. Um, and so I just, this is just a long-winded way to say there is pain and there is hurt and there is trauma. And that continues to flow into all our conversations and make um, things very hard, which I regret. And in terms of how he, his relationship with the boys, like how does that same um, way of interacting with you bleed over into the boys? Todd has a very good, Todd has a very strong relationship. Uh, Diane can speak to that more. Um, it does come, I mean, we have very different parenting styles. That in itself is challenging, um, you know, and very different beliefs and political views and everything, you know, so it, it can't help not affect them. I do believe they feel as I think even Mr. Stamp has said, they feel caught in the middle a lot. They just want peace. Um, and unfortunately that's a, that's something that Mr. Throckmorton and I have struggled to find. And if the boys um, voice uh, their needs to him or that like specifically with this topic about wanting a week on week off and wanting Friday exchanges, is, how does he react to that? He, um, I mean, it depends. Once again, Ms. Arnett may be able to say this better. Um, I do know that yeah, throughout- Help or speculation. Not sure she knows how he deals with the kids, but if Ms. Arnett is best better to speak to it, then that's fine, I'll ask her that question. So um, Ms. Throckmorton, I'm gonna sustain that objection to the extent that you're just uh, relying on what the boys have told you, but to the extent that you have any observations of your own from watching the interaction between um, the boys and your ex-husband, you're welcome to uh, talk about that. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sorry, Lisa, were you, did you want me to go? Yes, I mean, you heard what Judge Schleifer said. Like if there's any, like, you know, they tried to resolve this with him. Um, what were the behaviors after that fell short? Ultimately, it's been a lot of tears um, that I have seen firsthand just with the frustration, once again, of us wanting to find peace. And it's why, I mean, you listed the numbers of times the kids have been going to Diane long before this topic. So let me just be clear about that. But it's the reason I have taken them and made sure they were checking with them is so that they had someone that was impartial that they could talk to. Okay. Um, you have had the opportunity to review Mr. Throckmorton's Exhibit 1, which is his calendar. As it relates to the kids' activities, um, and it's his calendar and his summary, but what things stood out to you as being incorrect? Um, I don't I don't believe I would say they were incorrect. I just think they weren't completely if, if the conversation is around the breadth of activities and just the calendar, I think they were missing some things. Um, even in the kids' activities, there's a lot more that is was not listed. Um, and it's hard. There's just so much going on all the time. It's hard to keep keep track of it all. And so um, Mr. Thorpe-Burton's main argument um, against the Fridays is his work calendar. And so his work was on those calendars that he submitted. Um, you had a chance to review them. Tell the judge kind of 30,000 foot view what you noticed on those calendars. Um, I noticed the same stats that you looked at. I was surprised because of the amount of conversation that we have had around the needs of his work uh, calendar, uh, his work, his work demands and his new um, promising and, and rising job that it was not as frequent um, as I would have thought. And especially knowing and, and having observed, um, you know, the kids being or his travel just by his absence during the week and whatnot. I just expected it to have more. And that may be a byproduct of the fact that we're in this 225. I mean, I just, it's just my observation. So I gave those stats in my opening argument, but can you please tell the court, you know, statistically, if you're the witness, what you notice in terms of the percentages of travel that occurred on the weekend? Yeah, so I'm looking at the document he provided. I just want to be clear. I'm looking at the activities in the calendars. But um, I looked at the 64 weeks that were provided and approximately 17 of those had work travel. So back to that 26%. I also looked which of those um, followed or, or bled into a weekend. There was a lot that led into Fridays. I certainly understand that. Um, but most of that um, seemed to still allow a full weekend. Um, and then the other thing I just looked for or noticed was um, a percentage of travel that happened over his time in the current schedule on the 225. Um, can you also speak very briefly? Um, we had requested that this, the new schedule start in a couple weeks and, and tell the judge what's going on with your health. Um, why we made that request. Um, I originally, given that the, we're right smack at the tail end of the school year, had asked to start after in the next school year. But the reason I asked to have a delay was I have been planning for several months around a condition that I have with a tumor in my ear um, that I need treatment at MD Anderson. And it's been very hard to 
corral all the doctors and care that is needed. And the proposed calendar um, and timing would present a very big challenge to that, both in the procedure and the recovery. Your Honor, I'm going to object to relevance. There's, We've never had an issue with starting it at the date requested by Ms. Throckmorton. Oh. Um, you heard Mr. Samp say in his opening, and I'm trying to wrap up so that we can get the court time back, um, that this is about you and trying to align your calendar with Trisha's calendar, your girlfriend's calendar. Um, and and can you explain to the court why that sentiment is inaccurate? You're really trying to be child-centric. You're not trying to be parent-centric. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this is about what the kids' wants and needs are. The Trisha's calendar and their desire to have some coordination with the other kids in this household and the other families is part of it. Um, there are four kids in this household, but I am looking out first and foremost for my two sons. And the things that I referenced earlier are the key drivers of that. The Trisha part is one piece. Um, and they went to Friday to Friday for the same reasons I'm saying that, or week on, and even week on, week off for the same reasons as the kids are the same age, the activity. So, it um it it is a it is inaccurate because it is one piece of a multi-dimensional set of reasons that ultimately come back to what is best for the boys. And um ultimately, Ms. Brockmorton, is there anything that you think would be important for Judge Soyford to know in making her decision that we haven't already discussed? Ultimately, I want the same thing as the boys. I just want peace. I, it's been hard to have, and I understand why that is. I do not disrespect Mr. Throckmorton's career. I'm very happy for him. And I simply struggle with the limitations noted, especially when I have been told by him directly that this is his time for his career and his needs because everything else has been about mine. Your Honor, um, at this time I pass the witness, but I would ask for housekeeping if Diane can come on and let us know if she knows at what time she's gonna be called in the other case so that we're respectful of her calendar. All right, Ms. Arnett, what is your time? Um, I, I have notified them that I'm testifying in this case and they're working with the judge. They have not given me a specific time when I will come on. Um, I'm to notify them when I'm finished and hopefully they can wait, but I have not gotten any updates on a specific. So you kind of think that if Mr. Sam was to cross-examine Ms. Throckmorton, you'd have enough time, like that's fine. Okay, they, okay. Have a, they have a four hour hearing. Okay, perfect. All right, Mr. Sam, let me just um, say, I didn't want to interrupt anything earlier, but I prefer that the parties and the lawyers remain on camera. Um, so thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, all right, Mr. Sam, uh, you may proceed. I'm sorry, Mr. Sam, before you start, may I just ask who Hannah Smith is real quick? Because I'm unclear on her role here. She's my associate, Michelle. I'm sorry. Okay. She, she That's okay. I just wanted to thank you very much. Good morning, Ms. Throckmorton. Hi. Uh, Ms. Throckmorton, how long have you and dad been practicing the 225 schedule? Since the beginning of our divorce in 2017, 16, 17. So approximately seven years? Yes, sir. And how many issues did the two of you incur with that 225 schedule? Ultimately, it's hard to say. There have been different times where we have had to juggle and, and enroll other people for support due to various demands or needs. But um, in general, especially for many of the early years, it was fine. Um, and it's not that it's broken, it's what could be better. But did Mr. Throckmorton work with you to help you juggle those issues? I think we both have had hits or misses there, sir. Okay. And, um, was this week on, week off during the school year your request? Uh, the first time it was my request. The second time it came up with the boys and Mr. Throckmorton actually came back to me with it. But I had not brought it up because honestly, after his first reaction over a year ago, which I cited earlier in my conversation with Miss Lundgren, I did not think he would be open to it. So do you understand that this is your motion for a week on, re week off request during the school year? I do understand that, sir. And I'm saying that it was brought back up by the kids and the um, Mr. Throckmorton, at which time I had never wavered that that was what we wanted to move to when they went to middle school and high school. But because of the response of Mr. Throckmorton and the continued, I guess, um, lack of discussion around it, it wasn't until it came up 
in this past summer that we decided to pursue it. I have to admit, I'm very confused. You stated that this was Mr. Throckmorton's idea? I said that I originally brought it up, that he denied it, that the second time around when they were heading into another school year and we had had a year under our belt of seeing how chaotic it was, that the boys, as well as Mr. Throckmorton, realized and, and raised it and we began a discussion around it. And ultimately, this was you who filed this motion? I did, because when I raised, when we started those discussions, it very quickly turned into, sir, are you wanting to talk to him or me? Uh, you're turning, I'm, I'm trying to make sure. Is there something I'm missing? Sorry, I just saw you yeah, turn your I head. I conversations between you and me. I, I, asked, I just was making sure you turned your head. I'm just making sure I understand what. My, my client's so, allowed to, to speak in my ear if he has something to tell me. Okay, well, I just was trying to make sure that I had your attention and I understood your question. So could you repeat it? Uh, I would like to, could I have the court repeat my last question? Actually, the last question I see is, ultimately, this was you who filed this. A yes or no question, Mr. Dragline? Yes, it was me. Okay. And you've testified that your partner is also partaking in a week-on, week-off school schedule. Is that correct? Yes, they moved to Friday to Friday this year. Did they move to that schedule before you filed this motion? Yes. I, I'm i trying to remember, we were both in discussions with our ex-husbands in similar times, but they were able to re reach a resolution before, whereas Mr. Throckmorton and I um, went back and forth. Okay, so would it be fair to say that that this week on week off schedule um, with a Friday transfer would be accommodating for both you and your partner. The schedule. Now, are you aware at this juncture that that Mr. Throckmorton is on board with the idea of your request for a week on week off school schedule? Yes, I'm fully aware. And in fact, when were you told that Mr. Throckmorton was on board with this week on week off schedule? Once again, from the very beginning, as we started to discuss this, it was not a question of week on week off. It was a question of when the exchange day would happen and why. So would you agree that Mr. Throckmorton's being open to this idea of week on week off, which was your request, does not exactly fit this perception that he's a, a scorned partner that's that's trying to um, upend any of your requests? No, I wouldn't. You would not agree with that sentiment? I, I wouldn't, and I have plenty of texts and emails to prove that that is not the case. Especially when this is about the boys and it is what they want. Let's let's talk about the boys. Did you speak with any of their, their coaches or, or extracurricular People is involved with their extracurriculars. No, and my ex-husband did that. A simple no. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Yep. Uh, did you speak with their guidance counselor? No. Do you think that that would have, in retrospect, been a good idea? Sure. Your children are involved with extracurricular activities, correct? Many. Um, can you list those off? Sure. They are involved in multiple sports. As I mentioned earlier, my oldest son is involved in a very um, active band at high school. They, um, my oldest is also involved in Young Men's Service League with myself where we do frequent service hours and he has obligations um, for leadership meetings. He has also participated multiple times in various extracurricular band uh, performance groups that have had their, um, have their activities primarily centered on Sundays. My youngest is in multiple sports, both through school and through uh, extracurricular activities like Kung Fu. Um, that's just a, a snapshot of, you know, in addition to all their social uh, engagements. And do any of these extracurricular activities change what time the children would get home on a Friday? Of course, they're, they're a constant moving target and always at different times. No day protects that. Now, currently, um, the two of you do do week on, week off with a Friday transfer during the summer. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Would you agree 
that children's schedules during the summer differ from their schedules during the school year? Of course. You also mentioned that holidays um, were a reason for why you wanted the Friday transfer. Is that correct? Given the way that the holiday breaks with school um, begin and end, yes. Changes June, July, and August, correct? Yes. And, uh, and, and currently during the school year, you are doing Friday exchanges based on your 225. When they go back to him for the weekend, yes. And in, uh, over the course of these seven years, has he made complaints to you about how that impeded his work travel and his ability to progress in his career trajectory? Not specifically that I can recall. And generally, um, who helps Mr. Throckmorton um, with the kids' care when he is unable to do so? Generally, it's his wonderful mother. And what? And how frequently do you think she watches the boys? And how's your relationship with her? My relationship is good. She's been nothing but loving and respectful since the divorce. The boys adore her, and she is frequently there, I would say, almost every week. It doesn't mean that Todd's not there. She's just a very active presence of, in their lives. And now that we're, we have an agreement as of today that we're doing week on week off, how does that change? Because he's had to do his work travel around the 225 schedule. So how many more work days is he going to now get based on this new agreement to do a week on week off for travel? I would assume that he would have two full weeks, um, if not almost in their entirety, to be able to do that. You know, I, I I can't speak to what the demands of his work schedule is. I just I just know that the majority of the work week is still very much in play. So the boys asked to try out Friday to Friday and Sunday to Sunday. They asked to do a trial schedule to see what what worked better. And I'm what was Mr. Uh, Throckmorton's, uh, <laughs> what was Mr. Throckmorton's uh, dilemma with agreeing to do a trial of each day? So the objection is hearsay um, and I'm gonna sustain the objection. Um, <laughs> I take the boys out, Your Honor, does that yeah. cure it? Okay, um, if it just, you also were saying, can we do this trial? And what was Mr. Throckmorton's pushback on trying to do Fridays for a few months and then trying to do Sundays for a few months and see what worked better? Um, initially, when we could not agree on the day, he asked me if I would be willing to try it. When I suggested a um, 13 week on, 13 week off, he said he changed his mind. I then came back and suggested that we just try Sunday for a period of time to see if it worked and then evaluated through a mediator or through discussion together. And he wanted it um, in writing, no trial period. And so um, Mr. Sam, you know, kind of beat you up about the fact that we were trying to reach agreements to do potentially a Sunday date or a Monday date. And I, so I want that to be crystallized for the court. We did try fervently to get this settled, but why at the end of the day, were you unable to make that agreement? Why did you want to stick with the Fridays? Ultimately, I still believe it's in the best interest of the boys for the reasons stated. It does not mean that um, it perfectly aligns with my partner or will mean that we get to be part-time moms, which is what Mr. Throckmorton has repeatedly said to me. It is simply a matter of being the best for the boys for the reasons that I stated. And when we could not reach an agreement, it became obvious that I was, I might as well just stick with what I ultimately believe is best for the boys. And it, and is it safe to say that you don't want to capitulate like you always do? You want to take a stand for the benefit of your children. I ultimately am doing my best to make um, the kids a priority first my my own and then the other kids in this household as well. And I simply at some point lose my, 
my my own peace and my sanity and being able to have any clarity because of the endless back and forth that occur between me and Mr. Throckmorton. I'll pass away, Mr. Honor. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Throckmorton, a few questions. Um, one second, I'm just waiting for my client. Did you ever text Mr. Throckmorton on March 4th stating, um, I offered Sunday to Sunday, you, but you wanted forever? Yes, because that's what agreed. I, yes, I did. I did text that. So that was back on March 4th. And then you offered it Sunday to Sunday as recently as yesterday, correct? Yes. Okay. For all the reasons stated. Okay. And I know we, we touched on this before, but you just touched on it again. You would agree that your children's summer schedule would differ greatly than their, their school schedule, correct? Yes. Okay. And... Are you currently employed, Ms. Throckmorton? I am. That was incorrect earlier. Okay. And do you work on Fridays? Yes, I do. Okay. And what's your schedule? I mean, it's pretty consistently, um, especially because I have a heavy West Coast concentration. Um, I'll start at eight. I'll sometimes end at six. It depends, but I have a certain degree of autonomy to as long as I get the work done to do what I need to do. So you're on West Coast time? I'm saying my busiest times are starting around 10 because and to six because of West Coast, but that I have a certain degree of autonomy. Okay. I want to touch on that just a little bit. Um, West Coast five o'clock would be what time here? It's seven, but I don't work until then. Okay. But you work until six. My work calendar varies based on meetings, but I just said I have a high degree of autonomy. How often do you work on Sundays? Mm, usually just in preparation for uh, the weekend. So, but nothing required, if you will. I have an occasional uh, conference or work travel, but to this point, I just started my new job in January after being laid off. So it's too soon to tell, sir. And you said, hang on. You said that um, you work generally eight to six. Is that Monday through Friday? Yes, ma'am. Sir, you're on. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry. Did you? Yeah, no further questions, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Ms. Lundergan, anything else? No, no, ma'am. All right. We're going to go ahead and take our morning break. It's uh, 10. 31. We're going to break until about 10. At this time, I would call Diane Arnett to the stand. All right. Yes, I have a master's degree in counseling, um, uh, and I have an undergraduate degree in social work. And so you do a lot of work with court involved families. Um, how, for how yes. many years have you been doing this work within the family court system? Um, approximately seven for testifying. Okay. And how many families do you think up to this point have you worked with? I have probably testified for about 50 families. I've worked with many more families in that, in the hundreds about um, this sort of issue, the two, dual household living. And um, at what point did you have an opportunity to meet uh, Mr. and Mrs. Throckmorton? How many years ago? The first time I met them was May of um, 2019. Okay. And what has been your role um, for this family? I've primarily worked with Thomas and Turner, their sons. And how many sessions have you had with Thomas? 26. And how many sessions have you had with Turner? 21. And do you know how many sessions or how many conversations you've had with Ms. Brockmorton? I've had uh, probably about three in person, maybe four in person, and I've had many phone calls. Miss um, Brock Morton makes the appointments for the boys. She calls, and sometimes she'll give me a brief update about their challenges, what's going on at school or sports or with family. And yes. 
And so your role with Port and Ball families is um, usually in the role of co-parenting therapist, family systems therapist, or child therapist. Are there other roles that you sometimes take within the system? Ma'am, that is, that's a good summary of what I do. Um, I, I work with the parents individually as well, trying to make compromises between the two households to make it functional. I'm primarily an advocate for the children, always an advocate for children. And um, how many of these sessions, since you have worked with the family for so long, how many have been in the last nine months um, in reference to this issue that the court has before her? I've probably had uh, about six appointments, and I had a few more with Turner just recently um, this year. I've, I've seen him twice since 2024 commenced. So can you you know, briefly explain to Judge Schoifer a little bit about Thomas's personality, as you see it, as, as a therapist involved? In yes, yes ma'am. Well, Thomas is incredibly polite. He is respectful. Um, he's thoughtful. He's insightful. And he's... Um, gentle. He's very um, kind-hearted, gent gentle. He's very respectful of his friends and adults. I would say he's more introverted in comparing the two boys. They're very different. And Thomas is more introverted than Turner. And Thomas really tries to keep the peace um, in the family. I'd say he's, you know, tries to mediate a little bit. And then also, can you give the court a flavor for Turner? Uh, you know, I add what Thomas is, he's very um, intelligent and he is so dedicated to his instrument in the band and in orchestra. Um, he loves to study about it. Um, he did a recent, he did a presentation on French horn, although he plays, um, you know, I think he can play more than one instrument actually, but the band is incredibly important to him. As oh, our I'm sorry, are we talking about Thomas still or have you gone on to Turner? Yes, ma'am. No, we're still talking about Thomas. Thank you. And Thomas um, has also a track. Um, he's participated in track, and that's really important to me, to him. He has also mentioned his, he calls it a charity group, sort of, his um, public service that he does. And that's how he references. And I didn't realize until today how demanding that was until I heard Ms. Throckmorton's testimony. Um, now, Turner... Turner is, I call him the ambassador too. He is um, the one that brings his friends together. Although he's had some, you know, conflict. He's shorter in statue, stature and his friends sometimes have teased him about that, but he handles it with grace and, um, and integrity. And that's why I call him the ambassador because he doesn't let it get the best of him. Um, he's more outspoken, but he also is reluctant to cause conflict. And he, um, he's a jujitsu participant and he's striving to get his black belt and he is determined. He told me um, about two sessions ago, I'm going to get my black belt. It's just a matter of time. And he's hundred percent dedicated to that. Um, he struggles a little more in school. Um, his interest is um, friends and you know, he's just, he sometimes lets the um, assignments get the best of him. He gets behind in them, but he also feels really proud when he does well. And he reported a good um, last semester and he start, He said he's starting the new year strong. And that was one of his goals. Um, and how does he describe their relationship with Trisha's kids? Um, and I'm kind of surprised that there's any conflict whatsoever. They both have said how much they want Avery and Chase there and they like Avery and Chase. And there's quote unquote, they said no problems. Um, each child has her own room. They said, everybody's happy with her own room. Um, they the issues from the past are no longer an issue and they like them. They want them there. Um, they go to objection say, here. Say overruled next part. She can testify to what they the say. therapist only has Excuse me. I'm sorry. In Zoom, when y'all speak at the same time as someone else, I completely lose all of the whatever someone's trying to say. And Ms. Lonergan, because your volume is, is down lower than everyone else's, don't worry about it. I'm able to, to hear you. It's just if anyone else talks, it immediately cuts you off and I won't be able to capture that. So I just wanted y'all to remember that Zoom is its own weird animal. Thank you. 
I will try to speak louder. How do they describe their mom's house to you? Like uh, calm and peaceful are words that were recently used. And um, how do they describe their relationship with their mama? Um, they, they get along with her really well. They can talk to her. They feel like she listens to them. They feel like she tries to accommodate um, their needs and be flexible. Um, they were incredibly worried about her when she was injured in a car accident. And I imagine this new issue is probably causing them concern, although I didn't know about it till today. And how do they describe their relationship with Mr. Frogmore? Um, both parents provide fun activities. They both go on adventurous vacations. Um, they have, they take friends along with, on those vacations. Um, they provide a beautiful home, transportation, um, healthy food. And in that regard, it's, you know, equal, I'd say, in both households. The children describe more conflict with their father. Um, they say things like, um, they, I'm really reluctant to say what they say because I'm fearful that it could have backlash on them, but they have trust issues with their father. Um, they're concerned about his overreactivity sometimes. Um, when they bring a concern, they feel like they can't speak as honestly to him because it's considered disrespectful. So one of them said to me, which is pretty heart-wrenching, I worry I hurt my parents' feelings when I try to honor my own needs. And that influence comes more from dad's Objection health. Objection relevance, Your Honor. The, the, oh. the parents... Go ahead. The issue of whether or not the, the parents are good parents was never brought up in this case. This is strictly about which day the, the children should be transferred. So um, the objection is overruled to the extent that Mr. Uh, Brockmorton argues that the boys don't care about what day or about the schedule. I think it's important that I hear from Ms. Arnett about um, her perception of how they behave around each parent and what she knows about uh, their preferences. In regard to this specific topic of which day, um, Thomas has said he's tried to talk to his dad um, and dad's not open to negotiations is the way he said it. Now, they did express, if you want to talk about that topic, they did express back in the fall the desire for Friday because of their activities. Thomas especially because of band. Band is incredibly demanding. And he was in a football game every Friday night, almost every Friday night. And they stay at school and they participate in the games. The game's in late. The game's in particularly late if they travel to another field and to come home it's just easier on a Friday to make the transition. Just sometimes they go out to eat afterwards and it's late night. And then recently, both kids just say, we want peace. We don't, we don't want to be put in the middle. We don't want to choose one parent over another parent. We just want peace. And the truth is, I think the two boys talked about it because their words were, even though I met separately, almost identical to one another. And Turner has not had the demands on his schedule that Thomas has, because Thomas is older. Um, academically, it's harder. Thomas is exhausted. And he's said that the last several times he's been in, and he looks exhausted. And his, bro his face is broken out in acne from, I would assume, teenage stress. I mean, yes, teenagers have it. I'm a physician. I'm not claiming to diagnose him. But he looked, um, he looks exhausted, tired, and and he's pressured. He has a lot of pressure on him. Turner, less so. His activities are less demanding. And Turner is was supportive of Thomas last fall, as though Friday would be better. And last two sessions, I don't know if they're feeling more pressure from their parents or pressure between the households, but they both said the last two sessions, we just want peace. We're not going to say any, which way we like better. And so let me ask you a general question. Um, not specific to this family, like as a child therapist or a co-parenting therapist, family therapist, um, 
do you have an opinion about what days are better for an exchange, given the fact that you work with so many divorced families? And I would say Friday is the day because that these transitions are hard on the kids. And I think parents forget that even though they've been doing it for a long time, even though they love both parents, even though they know both parents love them. And by the way, I am not being critical of that each parent isn't a good parent. They have very different styles. Mr. Um, Throckmorton is more authoritarian. Miss Throckmorton is more autocratic. Kids typically prefer that, the second. But as far as, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Say the question again. The question about like taking this family aside oh, in yes. general with the court and both families that you work for, tell okay. the court the reasons why you think Fridays are better than Sundays. Okay. I'm sorry to talk over her. I apologize. I know better than that. Um, Okay, so it is actually Friday for the reason that I said the transitions are hard on kids. And, and though they love their parents, parents love them, they know the household rules. Remember, they have a set of rules at dad's house, a set of rules at mom's house, and a set of rules at school. And if they go anywhere else, there's another rule at jujitsu, at band, at school. And that's a lot of transition for kids. So the weekends are downtime. They're more relaxing. It gives them a chance to just let their hair down. And if they have any assignments to do, to do them at one house, have all their supplies there, um, hopefully that they bring with them everything they need. And then they start fresh on Monday at the new school school week. And I will tell you, that is the preferred for every child who does week on week off. The little ones, very different. Um, the you know pre-kindergartner schedules are the typically two, two fives. And they're more, it's much more important for them to have those uh, briefer visits. Um, but as far as days, it's it's unanimous that that's so, the preferred in my cases. And if Judge Schleifer, um decides not to do Fridays, we've also argued in the alternative for Mondays. Um, do you believe that Mondays are better than Sundays at 5 p.m.? Yes, ma'am. And the reason I say that is it usually um, whoever had the parent had them on the weekend takes them to school on Monday, then the other parent picks them up Monday after school, or they take the bus home to that parent. Sundays, you know, if you do a Sunday um, visit, it eliminates any um, weekend trip. Say they want to go with their friends on a camping trip, and they have to be back at Sunday at a specific time, um, and all their stuff's at one house, and they have to come home, and they got to shower, and they got to get ready, and they got to be at the other house. Something along that along those lines is difficult. Or um, you know, finishing up schoolwork. So yes, I would say Monday would be second choice. And then in, I asked you in generalities, um, is there anything that you haven't already said uh, potentially specifically about the Throckmorton family that would make you believe that Fridays are better than Sundays? I think it's their demanding, kid, the kids demanding schedule. And honestly, you know, they've kind of flipped on, they're just saying, just peace, just peace. I do know they want peace between their parents. And they know it's stressing their parents out. They can feel it. They can see it. They're not They're not blind to it. And they're old enough to notice. And they don't want their parents to be stressed. And they don't want to be the source of the stress. Um, 100%. So I would say it has to do with their academic demands. And that's the emphasis on Thomas, of course. But Turner's not far behind him. And I don't know what Turner, Turner will do in high school. He hasn't projected that yet. But it will be this a similar thing. He'll be demanding. They're at demanding schools, and they're in very competitive schools. Vandergriff has just skyrocketed in respect, and their Vandergriff band is one of the best in the state. They win at Bands of America in San Antonio almost every year, and they, you know, they got to go to that parade. That's an honor. So they're going to continue to do well. And do you have an opinion, Ms. Arnett, in terms of um, this issue with the households? Because you do a lot of blended families and family systems therapy about the schedule somewhat tracking similarly to um, Ms. Throckmorton's partner. Do, do you believe that, do you see that being helpful for the family or what the are your thoughts? It, the children prefer it. And I mean, they have said that the re in recent um, sessions, in the last four sessions, because I always ask about school, extracurricular friendships, how, how's it going at home? 
how's it going at each home and and specifically with um, Trisha's kids, Trisha and Trisha's kids. And they're reporting it's no problem. That's what they do. So, um, you know, I trust in what they say. I don't discuss it with the parents. Have they, have um, the boys in any of these sessions that you've done ever talked about um, difficulty not seeing their parents due to work travel? Has that ever been a topic of discussion? Um, they haven't, they have expressed that it occurs, but they haven't expressed any duress about it. Um, Mr. Throckmorton's mother is called Grand Bear and they love Grand Bear and they love when Grand Bear's at the house and, you know, like a grandparent relationship is just, I call it a love fest. It's a win-win and it's great for everybody involved. And they truly, they're respectful of her. They speak so highly of her and they're happy when she's there. Um, not that they're happier that she's there than dad, but they're okay with it. And truthfully, I thought she was there pretty much every Monday and Tuesday in the way they talk. I may be completely wrong on that, but. Um, um, at this time, Hannah, I believe it's petitioner six, but can you um, throw up um, Miss Arnett's CV? I don't know if there's any, since she's worked with the family for so long. Um, I, at this point, at this time, I'd like to have um, petitioner six, which is Miss Arnett's CV to be uh, admitted into evidence. No objection. Um, Ma'am, that is um, an old version, and there's a lot more education on there in my in reality than that represents. And I will be happy to get you a new updated CV. Can you, and, and I'm sorry we're using an older one, can you very briefly tell the court what additional education you've done since the time of this? Under uh, related experience, I have probably, um, and a continuing education, have hundreds of hours. And the emphasis that I have been focusing on is the AFCC program and co-parenting and um, high conflict, um, dual household living. Um, since then. And it's substantial. It's probably hundreds of hours. Um, we have a continuing education requirement of 30 hours a year, and I usually get double that easily. And at what point was there a shift? I understand that they were coming and saying they wanted Fridays when they were meeting with you in session. At what point did they stop saying, well, well we just want peace? And the, la the last two sessions, they have changed completely. And why, um, why do you think potentially you said it might be parental pressure? I'm sorry, you're moving around on my screen. But do you have any sense based on what they tell you about why they may have shifted to being adamant about Fridays to then just saying we want this to be resolved amicably? Do you think that it's a particular parent? That I would say the pressure is coming from dad. and the, But the conversations have happened with both parents about this topic. And they, the last two sessions, they changed dramatically. And that's when I said the boys were, they obviously talked about it because their words were virtually identical. Is there anything else that you think it's important for Judge Schleifer to hear today as it relates to this issue of Fridays versus Sundays? I always, you know, Judge, Your Honor, I always defer to what is best for the children. The children didn't destroy their family. They didn't disrupt their cohesive lifestyle. And, and I believe it is important that the parents accommodate the children. You only have them a few more years and you can do whatever you want the rest of your time. I'm not minimizing how important a career move is or an advancement, but these children's lifestyle is hard going back and forth in addition to their difficult academic and in addition to their difficult extracurriculars that, they're, that they are allowed to develop their own skills that they will need for life, that they will need for college, and that that should be the priority. That's my philosophy. I pass the witness. Good morning. Can you please explain your exact involvement with this case? Um, I began working with the children and the parents in May of uh, 2019. I met the parents first. And it was several months later that I met the children. Um, and primarily I've worked with the children. Um, 
like I said, I, I met jointly with Todd and Gwen at the beginning. Um, I conferred with both of them at the beginning on their perspectives. Um, and then the shift came to working with the children. And I work with Thomas individually and Turner individually, and occasionally the two of them together. But that was rare. And what, how, what would be your specific role? Well, I'm a marriage and family therapist. And so my goal, is, my goal has been with the children is to work on the challenges they have, what they face in school with friendships, with dual household living transition back and forth, with the relationship with Trisha and with um, the, her children, Chase and Avery, and both parents. R really every element of their life that causes them challenges, we focus on that primarily, but then also honor their successes. And how often do you testify in court as to your recommendations for um, transitioning from a 225 schedule to a week on week off schedule? Well, honestly, um, as a marriage and family therapist, I don't make direct recommendations to the court. I tell the narratives that I've heard and report um, the children's perspective and sometimes the parents perspective, of course, too, and leave it to the judge and the lawyers to negotiate what's best for the children. I present what I think is best for the children from their own words. Approximately how many cases have you had where there is a transition from a 225 to a week on week off schedule? Um, I, I would guess 30. Um, 225 usually is accommodating young children, um, preschoolers, toddlers, infants. Sometimes infants are two day, two day, two day. I have, I have one right now that alternates that frequently, but they're, it's less than one year old child. Um, and so as the kids get older, um, we transition typically to week on week off. Every, I'm not exaggerating when I say every child above six years old that I work with, have worked with, prefer week on week off. So I'm glad that that's established and that's not a discussion point anymore. Um, and that is even a six year old single little girl express preference and her parents made that adjustment. Okay. So through your period of time working with these children, did you ever express with dad that the children should move from the two to five schedule to week on week off? Yes. Todd and I talked about that, excuse me, Mr. Throckmorton and I talked about that very early on and we met in 2019 and 2021 in person. And he, I recall him saying, um, that that was offered at the beginning, but the kids, I remember the kids, of course, are younger and they agreed on two, two, three. I didn't, truthfully, I didn't know work was an, an issue. I thought that they agreed on two, two, three because of age and the novelty of the new experience. So they could continue to see each parent often. They also live close by one another. So it wasn't going to be, um, you know, burdensome long time in a car. Um, but I talked to Todd and Gwen about moving when you move forward to, you know, consider that I talked to every parent about that because this constant transitioning is a challenge for kids. Some days they don't even know which house they're supposed to go to. Some days they go to the wrong house on the wrong bus. Not, not these kids in particular, but that has happened with the frequency. Well, let's talk about that. Um, you said in these circumstances, there are challenges such as some days they don't know how to get on the wrong bus. Um, wouldn't you agree, and especially with extracurricular activities, wouldn't you agree that a Sunday transition would eliminate that confusion versus a Monday morning or a Friday evening? No, I'm talking about 225 is confusing. When they were doing 225, it's such a frequent transition then it's difficult for the kids to keep it straight. I'm not referring to week on, week off. Week on, week off is the children I work with prefer Friday. So in, in every, every one, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. In every one of your cases, the transition from two to five goes to a Friday evening transition on week on, week off. It's, it's a process. So I have a family that tried Sunday. They tried Monday. They tried Thursday. And they landed on Friday. But yes, that is the preferred day. And sometimes it takes three or four attempts to get it to that. 
but that's where they land, especially if they have to pack up more things to take. And I'll say typically that's girls who want the certain outfit and certain makeup, um, boys less so, carry back more equipment. But they, they do have sports equipment that they have to carry back and forth. Well, that kind of brings, well, let me first bring you back to my initial question. So it's your statement here today that every single one of your cases that has transitioned from 225 has landed on Friday evening transitions. That's right. Okay. And you mentioned earlier that um, there can be a lot of stress involved with these extracurricular activities. Is that correct? I would say demands and stress in the sense of they have a lot of rehearsals. They have to be on time. They have to remember to get all their equipment in there. And so I would say it is, it's a high level of demand. And, and would you, would you agree that a lot of these extracurriculars happen during school days? I think they happen on school days and weekends. I know band competitions are all over the city and frequently all day Saturdays. Would, would it be fair to say that if you added a family transition on top of a school day, on top of all those extracurricular activities, it would add to more stress with that child's day? I would 100% say it's the opposite. It's a wind down day. Ah, it's the weekend. Relief. Friday, we get there and it's now it's just let your hair down and sleep, hopefully sleep late from the late Friday night activity and then transition into the weekend. So I think it's a stress reliever. I think it's a stress reliever also to be on a consistent day. You mentioned that there were certain days when the children are supposed to be with father, but Grand Bear was there instead. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that that was a positive experience, but wouldn't you think it would be preferable to have their actual parent there versus the grandparent? Like I said, I'm not being disparaging towards um, Mr. Throckmorton in any way, but they love their grandmother and they don't, they have not lamented, I believe was um, something that Ms. Uh, Londergan asked is, have they ever complained about dad being work working? They know both of their parents have a high demanding career. Both of them do. They're accustomed to them both traveling. They're accustomed to them both working and valuing their career and role modeling that. Did you so, not say earlier that Grand Bear is also present other days of the week? Grand Bear, I don't know what day. I kind of got the impression that it was a usual Monday, Tuesday thing, but I also said I can't swear to that. They, they have, love having her there. That doesn't mean they love having her there more than dad. They just She's been their typical stand-in babysitter when dad has to travel. Correct. And, and I understand that it's your statement that every family that you've been involved with lands on a Friday transfer. But if, in your professional opinion, if landing on a Friday transfer means that the children are going to be spend, spending time more with Grand Bear on that day than on a different day where their father can be present, wouldn't that impact your recommendation? I don't think it's simple black or white, sir. I think it is, Grand Bear is a benefit to them. She is not a deterrent in any way. They love having her. It's a special relationship. Does it mean dad isn't? The way they, I think they feel like they have a lot of time with dad and a lot of time with mom. And if one of them needs to be gone for a day, they're not lost without their parent. They jump right into Grand Bear just like they jump into the transition back and forth. Well, I find it concerning, and, and I agree with you that it's not black and white, and that's my concern. I believe that every set of circumstances is specific to that family, and I do think that all of those circumstances need to be considered. And I, it appears to me that your recommendation is coming in light of the fact that father may not be around on a Friday due to his work schedule. And you would agree with that statement. Okay. That's multiple comments at one time. I don't know what Todd's travel schedule is. I have never talked to him about the details of it. I do know he travels. I know Gwen, uh, Mrs. Miss Throckmorton travels some too. I don't know the details of either one's schedule. I'm not saying it's a good idea to replace. I'm also making the recommendation 
only by expressing the children's preference. I'm not recommending it from even my professional as much as I am from advocating for what the children want, especially Thomas. And so I do think it's a the best day in the sense of it's easy transition. There's no homework to do on Friday night. There's no big household project that's going to be done on Friday. And typically um, there's not, it's the, it's the end of whatever they're doing. It's not the beginning of whatever they're doing. Um, sometimes Friday night might be hard if there's an early morning band competition. That's the only that's the only example that I have that I can imagine where Friday night might be hard if they need to get up early Saturday. And I don't know if parents make accommodations to that sort of thing or not. Um, you mentioned that you don't know Mr. Throckmorton's work schedule. Are you aware of um, mom's work schedule? No, I just said I don't know their travel schedule. I learned more about it today listening to the testimony from Ms. Throckmorton than I've ever heard. Do you know how long Ms. Th Ms. Throckmorton has been employed at her current position? Um, she, yes, she said January, and she mentioned that to me when she got a job. She was applying for it, and then that she got it, and I asked her if she got it. If you found out that mother, mom or dad's um, work schedule could cause difficulties um, with a Friday visitation. Would that be something that you would factor into your recommendation? Well, listening to the testimony today, and perhaps it's going to be corrected by Mr. Throckmorton, it sounds like it has not been, Friday hasn't been an issue for transition day. And yeah. if he is coming in on a Friday, say at five o'clock, that shouldn't be a problem, especially for Thomas, who's at, he's going to stay in the fall for sure. And I'm not sure his spring schedule when um, I think he's in track this spring when their competitions are, but usually things are winding down. These kids are too, are also old enough to stay by themselves uh, on Friday evening till dad gets home and they don't get out of school and get situated till about five o'clock anyway. My question was, if you were told that there was a conflict because of the employment of the parents, would that be something that you would factor into your recommendation? Objection asked and answered. Overruled. Um, okay, so I'm assuming he's traveling on a Friday is what I'm imagining you to say. Just a very general question. You find out that the, the parents have a conflict because of employment due to on that Friday visitation. Is that going to impact your recommendation? If it were on a regular basis, Yes, I would consider that. If it's a once in a while, I wouldn't think. I think there's accommodations can be made because that happens to all all parents all the time. They have to work late. Something comes up. Grandmother gets sick. They've got to go take. I mean, there's endless reasons. While there's a shift in schedule on day to day basis, it's not just work. But if it were regular, I think that's a more a bigger issue. You said that, I believe you said that um, Friday or Monday would be better for taking a weekend trip. Is that accurate? Um, sure. Kids get out of school on Friday and typically, what, I, what I'm not sure I understand your question, but yes, for Friday, a Friday transition or a Monday transition, and not simply because of a trip, but a trip is, and it is excluded on a weekend where there's a Sunday um, an early Sunday transition because you get out of school Friday at five o'clock. You can't go very far and come back in time um, to get back for that transition. You know, it's not just arrive and drop the kids off at the new home. It's arrive at home, unpack the car or the suitcases and readjust and, you know, re uh, reboot for the transition. So for many reasons, I think Sunday is hard. Are you aware that the Sunday request is for Sunday evening? At five o'clock. It's pretty early. But I think if you do a Sunday transition, it needs to be that early because they got to get in the gear for school and get in the mindset of the different parenting styles, rules, household, how things are done. So, yes, I think they need transition time. What about if the family wanted to take a traditional three-day weekend? Wouldn't it be beneficial to for them to have a 
transition period on a Sunday evening. So the parties could be with a parent on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, versus having a transfer on a Friday and one parent leaving, having to leave for that weekend trip, even just a weekend trip after five. Well, typically they're in school Friday, so it wouldn't be a three day. If they did Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they'd have to take off school, which at their age is not appropriate during the school year for the weekend, for the summer. I think that's that's great. But if it were going to be leave Friday at five o'clock and you got to be back Sunday at five o'clock, it's I mean, you can't go very far and that's fine. Um, it's a certain limitation you're setting on a weekend transition for a for a Sunday. That's the only no, I'm noting it for anybody, not specifically for this family. Um, so you did note that there has been kind of a flip flop with the children um, over your last few sessions. Um, do you think there's a chance that this could be because they know their mother's new employment schedule? Uh, no, they just want peace between the household. They didn't express anything about their mother's uh, work schedule, and, and nor do I know it. Um, they just want peace. They can feel the tension of the parents, and they feel stuck in the middle, and they don't want to be the ones to decide. Um, have you discussed with mother the Friday transition period? Uh, yes. Okay. Are you aware as to mother wanting a Sunday visitation period, transition period as recent or as recent as March? Well, from March 4th through yesterday? Um, Ms. Rockmorton told me she's con um, conceding because she wants peace also. So you spoke with Ms. Rockmorton about this issue? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, I did. As, re as recent as when? Um, it's been a couple, uh, January, maybe. Okay. I think it was January, maybe February. I don't know when she changed her mind and told you she changed her mind, but she told me she's, it's just, it's she, actually, she called and said, is it, is this even worth it to fight for this, for the boys? Would you concede that if both parents were recommending Sunday visitation, and the children are saying they simply want peace, that Sunday visitation would be a good option for this family? I think the children wanted, I think Thomas wanted Friday, and the reason he flipped was because the parents were stressed. So I think the children are parenting their parents. We call that parentification, when they're taking the emotional needs of the parents over their own. If both parents agreed on Sunday, because that fit their schedules and they believed it was in the best interest of their children, would you be on board with that? Um, well, if they were, if they did believe it was in the best interest of the children, yes, but in this case, that has not been expressed. No further questions. Honor, I also pass this witness. All right. Um, thank you, Ms. Arnett. You are excused. Thank you. Good luck to you all. All right, Ms. Lundergan. Your Honor, at this time, I would rest. All right, Mr. Samp, you may call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to call Todd Throckmorton. Mr. Throckmorton, up until this point, what possession schedule have you been following? 225. And how has that possession schedule been going? I mean, I think for the most part, it's worked out well. I think that uh, Mrs. Uh, Gwen and I, Mrs. Throckmorton, have worked well to accommodate each other's schedule. And it's been sufficient. I certainly recognize a need for a change due to the kids. And who approached who about switching to a week on, week off schedule? That was Gwen. And when did Gwen approach you about the week on week off schedule? Um, the second time was about eight or nine months ago, as Gwen alluded to the first time due to the local work schedule and what was going on, the 225 uh, work best and certainly open to and, and want to accommodate a week on week off schedule. Did she explain to you her rationale for wanting to go on to a week on week off schedule? Um, 
to the best of recollection, and I think as per our discussions, it was easier for the kids. And when she approached you about it, were you open to it? Absolutely. Do you have, or once she approached you with this and you told her that you were open to it, um, did she suggest a specific day for a transition? Uh, well, that's when she suggested Fridays. Um, and that's what she was really promoting for, yes. Do you have any reason to um, know why she chose Friday specifically? Um, yeah, what she shared with me was that you know, due to her um, work schedule, due to the kids' existing schedule, and the transition with Chase and Avery made it easier for them and for the kids. So do you have reason to believe that her partner's um, possession and access schedule changed recently? Um, you know, honestly, I just, I don't know enough other than talking to the other father that um, they had agreed to a Friday to Friday because his new wife, they were trying to promote something like that. And they, he was just trying to agree and, and make it easy. He says he doesn't travel. It's easy for his schedule. So to your knowledge, mom's partner recently switched to a week on week off Friday to Friday schedule. That's correct. And it is it of your opinion that mother was choosing that day out of convenience for her? Yes, it is. When she approached you with that Friday, week on, week off, transition date, did you tell her that Friday would work? Um, no, I mean, I, I maybe just to give a little bit of background on what I shared with her is that my new job role caused my travel schedule to be on a more national basis rather than just um, regional. And so what that did was cause more travel for me coming back typically. And what I try to do if I due to the current 225 schedule is schedule a trip from Wednesday through Friday so I can meet with clients and prospects and share with her that that, that is a challenge for me because I have had uh, travel delays. I've had bad weather, um, canceled flights, delayed meetings on Fridays that would cause me to come in late to be a part of my children's activities. And that's important to me. Now, the two of you currently practice a week on week off schedule with Friday transitions during the summer. Is that not true? That is correct. Now, why does this transition period work for you during the summer versus during the school year? It, uh, just the clientele that I meet with, um, both prospects and clients, the, the amount of summer travel there are business meetings during the summer drops off significantly. And so really the, the prime times that I am meeting with the prospects and clients are in the fall and in the, in the spring. And how often do you travel for work on a Sunday? Never. I'd like to draw attention to respondents um, exhibit R1. Now, Mr. Throckmorton, can you describe for the court what we're looking at? Yeah, I mean, this is my typical monthly calendar. Um, anything that's yellow, those are travel days that are back to back multiple days in a row. Um, it doesn't signify any types of day trips that I might have if I'm doing a quick in and out or back and forth real quick. But these are just really showing shoulder dates of when I would be traveling. It doesn't show all of the appointments that I might have throughout the day and how long they might last. And when you, on those day trips that you just described, are those trips where you, you could still encounter flight delays or traffic delays or anything of that sort? Yes, and appointment delays. And, and just to put a little color around that is that my clientele is in the private equity space. Uh, a lot of times I would say similar to being in court, there's different delays that happen and it's imperative that we still meet with them, but it might push the, uh, the time back 
Um, you know, it could be as little as 15 minutes. It could be two hours. Uh, you just don't know. And you currently schedule these trips to the best of your ability at times when you don't have your children. Uh, yes. I want to be very active with both my boys, uh, scholastic and extracurricular activities. So if you had a week on week, week off schedule, uh, would it be better for you to plan all those travel days on a week when you don't have your children? Yes, absolutely. Um, would that throw a wrench in your travel week if every Friday you've got a transition with your children? I mean, it would certainly make it difficult because, you know, I've got to work to the needs of, of what the client might want to do. And so a big part of what I'm doing is project managing, bringing in other talent to help us execute on an engagement for one of our private equity clients. It's uh, you don't know what might pop up at any given moment. And so if you don't have to have a travel, I guess, impediment, it would certainly be helpful um, and being more productive. And I think more importantly, though, is just knowing that I can be there for the kids' football games. I can be there for the after-school activities. I can be a part of planning their weekend as they're going into an event and wanting to spend time with their friends, friends and being uh, active in, in participatory as you go into the weekend. Now, with your current 223 schedule, has there ever been an ex extracurricular event that has caused an issue on a, on a Sunday? No, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Are, are the two of you currently working with each other in order to maybe make um, leniencies regarding the schedule if there's an extracurricular event? Very much so. And that's why I'm surprised to hear some of the comments by uh, Ms. Throckmorton and her counsel about uh, the tone in which we work together. Because as an example, as uh, Ms. Dr. Arnett just mentioned is Thomas is very proud of his YSML, and that is an activity that he is very engaged in with his mom. Um, I get it. I, I want my children. I'm not a barrier to them spending time with their mom. They spend time together, even when it's on a weekend that I might have Thomas. And that could be anywhere from a full day to a half day to maybe just a couple of hours. But I've certainly recognized that value and that importance and what both Thomas and his mom get out of that time together. So uh, I think that, and Gwenda, I think has been very accommodating to me as well. I mean, it's, we, we try and work with each other's schedule. At least that's what I found historically. So when you heard testimony earlier from Gwen stating that the two of you have a very contentious relationship, um, especially revolving the, the possession and access of the children, is that what you understand it to be? I mean, I think there's a lot of misinterpretation and tonality that might come across in texts. And I've tried to share with Gwen, look at this as if she's a big sports fan. She likes football. Hey, look at this as if we're talking about the statistics and what's going on in football. It's just, let's have a conversation and work it out. And I think she and Ms. Lonergan mentioned equating her to a general. I look at it as being she's very regimented in how she wants to proceed and how she wants to communicate. And I said that in the tonality It is you're very regimented and structured in how you want to move forward with this. And I think her tone, I try and be very amicable. I'm not sure how she's interpreting it, but this is how our conversations ensue whenever we're having a talk just like this. Your request for the court today, is this based on any kind of um, scorn towards um, her leaving you? Absolutely not. Is this based on any kind of hatred towards her new relationship? No, absolutely not. Have you ever expressed to to mom that this was the basis for any of this? No. Has she ever expressed to you throughout this process that she believes that this was the basis for any of this? Frequently. Now back to your schedule, Exhibit R1. Um, you stated that you know, the, the trips are in yellow, but that you may have um, day trips that would not be shown on here. That's correct. Okay. Um, would you agree that on certain days, such as Tuesday, the 4th of April on this first page, that if you expanded that day, you would have 
eight events on that day. Correct. Okay. And, and just to expand on that real quick in your line of questioning is like, let's say on Friday, the 7th, one of those appointments, it could be something that I went down to Houston and came back that same day. It just, I didn't, I knew I didn't need two or three days to block that out. Well, you read my mind. That was going to be my next question. Okay. <laughs> um, but you heard Ms. Lundergren say that you travel at most 25% of the time on a Friday. Is that an accurate reflection of when you'd be traveling? No. Um, my role now takes me coast to coast. Um, and I've also had some international travel. So it, it's it's very up in the air. And if anything, by having a this week on week, week off schedule, which Ms. Throckmorton also agrees, I think would certainly make it easier for both of us. It's just the Sunday transition so that I can still be involved with the kids' activities and not miss the opportunity to afford them the, the opportunity to go out and have fun and go skiing like we did last week takes a lot of pressure off. Your Honor, I'd like to ag admit Exhibit R1 into evidence. Any objection? No, Your Honor. R1 is admitted. Mr. Thurak Morton, were you um, aware of Mother's current employment schedule prior to today? No. I knew she'd gotten a job, but I didn't know in what capacity or how long it's been. So you don't know when she began her employment? I do not. Yeah. So there's a chance that um, she began this employment after she made this motion to move on from week on, week off. Yes. Okay. Do you think then that there's a chance that this is why mother was amenable to Sunday transfers? Quite possibly. Now you heard the therapist state that on Fridays, sometimes grand bear is there instead of you. Um, can you describe to the court who grand bear is? Oh, that's my mom. Okay. And why would Grand Bear be there on Fridays instead of you? Um, well, there's been canceled flights and, and specifically there was one where uh, coming back from New York, flight was canceled, layover in Dallas. So I couldn't get there until the following day. And so, you know, while Miss Arnett, Dr. Arnett may say that the kids are old enough to stay on their own, you know, as a parent, I want to be a part of that. I want to be there with them. And I certainly don't feel like they're old enough to be at the home by themselves overnight. Now, do the children see Grand Bear when you are around? Yes. And, and Ms. Arnett is accurate. Every Monday, Tuesday, it's just as much a treat for Grand Bear to be there fixing dinner and, and being a part of the boys' lives and being a matriarch for the kids as, as it is for them. I mean, it makes them both feel great. Very blessed to have her in my life. Now, on those Fridays when you're not there and Grand Bear is helping watch your children, would you rather spend your time with your children? Absolutely. I want to be participating in all their activities and, and after school activities in the next morning, whatever that might be. So in your opinion, that is why you're suggesting the Sunday transitions? Well, certainly work is a part of it. I just, I look at the kids and, and I can only say from the conversations that we've had is that they're amendable to either. And that a Sunday, I see all of this at Trisha and Gwen's household, as well as my household, is a time of family being together in the evening and having dinner time together. There's no stress about school activities going on. There's no carpool activities going on. Talking with the boys and observing my own family, I, I can't predict what goes on with, with Gwen's household, but Sunday is our time to barbecue and hang out and laugh and unwind the week before going into the weekend. And there's no stress of carpooling back and forth. There's no stress of maybe Thomas having a band event that's in uh, let's say Lano and they don't get back until 2 a.m. that have to be picked up and then brought back home. And then the, there's no stress of getting up the next early for a band activity that might be taking place outside of town. They just get up and go to school the next day. 
So while I've heard certainly a lot of hearsay about the kids, all I can say is from my perspective is that they're amendable to either. Now, have you ever reprimanded either of your children um, when they speak to you about a preference of transitionary periods? No, not at all. And uh, as a matter of fact, when, when Thomas had the conversation with me, I applauded him for the amount of strength to be able to come in and have a conversation and tell me what he wants and what he desires. And I told him I would totally respect that. I get that Friday maybe his day that he wants to transition. And then I shared with him, just as we're having a conversation like this, tonality, and I'm, if we could bring him in as witness, I think he would say the same thing, is that I want to be a part of their lives. I don't want to miss out on activities due to travel. And as a father and as a parent, what does work best for me and what I see working best for the kids is a Sunday to Sunday schedule. And I said it just like that. I said that it would be easier without having to lug your equipment, lug your school gear, lug your backpack, uh, your equipment back and forth when you can do that on a Monday without having to stress about what other stuff you might need to be taking to your mom's at one o'clock or maybe 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the afternoon during football season. It would be much easier on a Sunday. And that's where I felt like the boys gave the sense that they were much more amendable to being open to Sunday. And to me, that's about the same time where I felt like Gwen said she was amendable to a Sunday. And I, that's what she obviously presented. And it wasn't until yesterday that, that then that changed from a Monday offering then back to a Friday offering. So I, I felt like we were in alignment up until four o'clock yesterday. Well, let's touch on that. So throughout this process, mothers offered Friday transition periods. Is that correct? That is correct. And she's offered Monday visitation periods. Is that correct? That is correct. And she's offered Sunday visitation period. Is that correct? That is correct. And is it not true that on as far back as March 4th, she was texting you saying that she is agreement with, with Sunday transition periods? That is correct. Okay. And is it not true that the two of you were negotiating over other language besides that Sunday transition period at that juncture? That is correct. So at that juncture, the idea of a Sunday transition period wasn't an issue. That is correct. Okay. And is it not true that as of yesterday, you signed an agreement that she offered that allowed for Sunday transition periods? Yes. At approximately between 1130 and 12, right before I went for lunch, Received the DocuSign, and I thought we were all done. And then what happened? Um, I was on a conference call and got a phone call from you at a little bit after 3 o'clock. And I thought it was everything was going to be buttoned up. And you said, well, now she wants to offer Monday to Monday exchange. Did she provide you with any reasoning as to why the date should now be Monday? No. Has she honestly provided you with any reasoning as to why she has chosen any of the dates she has provided? No. Do you love your children, Mr. Throckmorton? Yes, absolutely. Very do you, proud of them. Do you want what's in their best interest? Absolutely. And I know that their mom being a part of their lives is just as important. In spite of what Ms. Laundergren and what Mrs. Throckmorton are saying, I have no ill will. And would you recommend to this court a transition date that wouldn't be in their best interests? No, Your Honor, I, I would not do something like that. And if I may just step in there is that I've got two incredible boys and I know that I'm not raising them on my own. I know their mom is just as active and cares for them just as much as I do. And Your Honor, I'd tell my friends that if I could take all the credit, I would, but I can't. And this is not a, a, out of a vindictiveness. This is not out of spite or disagreeing with Gwen's lifestyle. This is genuinely looking at how can I remain fully active with my children's life? And when is a really just a simple transition? 
that's just easy for everybody without having to try and manage different schedules. And Sundays, it's simple. I mean, I don't know about you, but I remember just with my mom and dad sitting there in the afternoons and having a great barbecue somewhere between three and five o'clock and winding down and watching Disney together. And that's what I envision with my boys. And that's what happens at my household. And I'm sure that's what goes on with wins. We're not competing for schedules with the kids and trying to manage who's picking up and who's dropping off. Um, so I, I wanted to add a little bit of color there that I kind of felt disparaged earlier. And there, there is no tonality there towards my ex-wife. But you disagree not just with your ex-wife, but also with the kid's therapist. Um, I, you know, I don't know her opinions and, and why that is. Um, I will only look at the context of the schedule and how my ex-wife is saying she just wants Fridays. I'd certainly look at that from a convenience schedule for her and her partner and her children um, rather than being amendable and saying, gosh, you know what? Todd is just as much of a father and he has 50% of this as well. What might make it easier for all of us? And Mr. Throckmorton, when was the last time you spoke with the therapist? Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess two years. I don't know for certain. Two years ago? Yes. Okay. Has she reached out to you to, dis to discuss um, which day would be beneficial for the children? No. Has she reached out to you to, to discuss any concerning behavior um, or stressors that the children may be facing? No. Are you aware that she is reaching out and discussing these issues with Ms. Throckmorton? No. I know that the boys were seeing her as a therapist and I'm all for that. Um, but I did not know that there was specific conversations around schedules. So you never had the chance to discuss your perspective regarding a Sunday transition period no, with the therapist. I did not. And you've never had the, the opportunity to describe with her the potential struggles of a Friday transition period. No, I did not. I would have been open to it, certainly. And you've never had the opportunity to discuss um, with her um, what either of you believed would be in the best interest of your of the children's schedules. No, I have not. Do you find it concerning that Ms. Throckmorton has apparently consistently had conversations with the therapist? Well, in this context, I do because... You know, as your honor just asked, I'm going against what the the therapist suggests, but I never had an opportunity to have a conversation. And so she doesn't have my perspective or view. It's only one sided. And so I wish I would have had this opportunity prior to having this discussion right now. And you heard the therapist testify today that she does believe recently that the children have kind of flip flopped. Yes. What is your belief? of the children's preferences today? Oh, I mean, just talking with the boys yesterday and this morning is they couldn't believe that their mom suggested Monday because she said she would never do a Monday. And they were going down the path that Sunday was going to work just fine. And you heard Ms. Throckmorton testify today that she may have to work until 6 p.m., would that um, interfere with her proposed transition time? Um, I'm sure it would. I'm sure there'd be asks and added responsibility either on myself or on her partner to manage that transition. And do you believe it's in the best interest of your children to, when they're with mother, be spending time with mother? Yes. So is it of your opinion that having a Sunday transition period would prevent said interference with mother's work schedule. No. You don't believe that it oh, would? Oh, I'm sorry. So, I mean, yeah, if, if they, uh, I got you confused. Um, yeah, I mean, if their mom's working till six or seven, eight at night, and just looking at her history of working at Facebook, I don't know what her new job looks like. She's an accomplished professional. She works hard. And uh, it would certainly interfere with the ability to be interactive with her kids. And you think that a, a Sunday visitation transition would would help rectify that for her. 
Yeah, I think that Gwen has said she makes herself available to volunteer and be active on Sundays with minimal work interference. And so uh, she's a very dedicated mom. I know that she would be focused on the kids on Sundays. And I also know that when she's at work, she's very focused on work. No further questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, would you like me to um, wait till after lunch? I don't know what your calendar in the afternoon looks like. I can try to keep it to 10 or 15 minutes, but I don't want to impede on anybody's lunch. Mr. Beck, how much time do each of them have left? Ms. Lonergan has 12 minutes and Mr. Samp has 10. So I think we're going to go ahead and work through the next 22 minutes. Um, Michelle, are you okay with that? Yeah. All right. So you may proceed, Ms. Lonergan. Um, for court purposes, you filed your proposed disposition of issues on March 1st, saying that you wanted to continue the 225. At what point for legal purposes did you change your mind and you were willing to do week on, week off? Um, for legal purposes, when did I change my mind right. between the 225 and, um, well, we were having the discussions on uh, around or about August eight or nine months ago. But just a couple weeks ago, you said that you wanted to continue the status quo. You would do only do 225. That's what your lawyer told me. That's what he filed with the court. When did you change your mind, sir? Oh, uh, well, because it, it didn't seem like Gwen wanted to be able to have any sort of concession. So, I mean, it was roughly that time when the, the files were, were, I guess, presented to the courts, whatever date that was. Was that ever shared with us that you had changed your mind and were willing to do week on, week off legally? Uh, I, I believe so. I, I think there's been a lot of dialogue between the attorneys that I'm not aware of. Do you agree that you, there are texts and emails from you where you're agreeable to a Monday exchange? Is that yes, I, I, I made that available. Okay. And Somebody's you talked to Mr. Sorry, Sam. I just needed to copy y'all again to please maybe watch the screen also to make sure you're both finished because I'm, I'm missing out some of the answer and some of the question when you speak over each other, I apologize. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Noted. Thank you. Um, you were talking to Mr. Samp at length about your work schedule. You said twice that you have an ability to schedule your. You have flexibility, like you can determine when you're going to meet with your finance clients. Correct. I try to. And do you concede that you've had a two two five? Everybody keeps calling it a two two three, but you've had a static schedule where you always had certain days during the week that you could travel and now you're going to have a whole week that you're going to be able to schedule your time on do you concede that that is a big change for your ability to work around your work schedule uh yes and no i mean again it depends on when the clients can meet when they can't be so I, i'm not able to dictate my own travel schedule i can certainly try and uh improve what the outlook's going to be but Similar to you all, when a client wants to meet, you want to go make sure they're taken care of. Okay. Um, I never meet with clients on the weekend. So you would have an ability, even though you want to be um, work with them, you would have an ability to say, my work days are Monday through Friday because I have kids. You could do that. Yes. Mr. That Robert. is correct. Okay. And so in terms of the R1 that you presented, our contention was 26% of the time was travel and only 3% of the time ever had travel on a weekend. Do you, do you think that it is more than 3% of the time over these, you know, the seven years that you've had, I think you gave us calendars going back many months where you're having to travel on weekends. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you're asking maybe 3% of the time I travel on weekends. That's what, what we saw in the calendars that you gave us. Yeah, there there might be appointments on there that have nothing related to travel on the weekends. Uh, I don't recall ever traveling on a Sunday or on a Saturday to go meet with a client. And so you, um, the only time that you're really concerned about for purposes of telling Judge Schaefer is on coming back later because of a delay in a flight or something on a Friday. Because historically, over all these years, you had Friday transitions, both for summer and for your school schedule but it hasn't historically been a problem. Uh, so with that, if I'm hearing you correctly, 
history? Yes, th there have been delays. There's been flight delays. There's been weather delays. There's been uh, client and prospect delays that have impacted uh, return trips on a Friday. And do you agree that that's like 3% of the time, a very little amount of time? Or do you think that happens all the time? It, it happens frequently. I can't put a percentage on it. I don't, I'm not, I don't have enough statistics, information or data points to be able to analyze that. But now you could, with your full week, travel from Monday all the way to Friday at noon or Monday through Thursday only, correct? It wouldn't change much depending on whenever the client wants to meet. You said with Mr. Sam that it's really about tonality and that you guys have a good relationship. I want to ask you whether you believe that these messages that you're sending to Ms. Throckmorton are just about tone. You say that I want to get your insight on what your conversations look like with Thomas and Turner and the LGBTQ community and your view as a Christian and as a lesbian. Do you deny that you have made comments to her about the fact that that she's Christian and a lesbian and you want to know how she's discussing it with the boys? Well, in the tone that you read it, I deny. But in the to in actually typing that out, not at all. It would be a conversation just like this. The tone is, yes, I would like to know what the conversations look like in the LGBTQ community as a father I think I have an opportunity to know what those discussions are. She's never decided to have those conversations with me and I've never pressed. So again, when you say we're still here because of your affair and the divorce and it's all about you and your desires just a few days ago, you think that's just tone, but that, that it's a respectful and kind thing to say. Well, I mean, if I say it like, Hey, this is why we are still here, Gwen, because of what her decisions are. It wasn't my decisions that put us in this courtroom. It's not my decisions that have her and Miss Trisha getting in fights that the children are, are bringing up to me. That's not me. That's not the tonality that I bring to the table. And so same thing with calling her a general just a few days ago. You were a general in a past life. There is no deviation from your pan at all cost. That's you co-parenting beautifully. Well, when you tonality, put the tonality around it like that, it's going to sound very bad. But if I say you're very, uh, you're generalistic, you're very regimented in how you are approaching this, that is how I've said it. That's, these are the level, the tonality is which, in which Gwen and I have had conversations. As I am speaking to you, Ms. Launderbrand, it's just like this. I never raised my voice and gotten frustrated, even when I had to go pick up the kids at 11 o'clock in the evening on a Saturday because she was kicked out of her own home by her partner. So you I gave her a hug and I said, I'm sorry that you're having to deal with this. On June 27th, 2023, Ms. Um, Throckmorton sent you an email, June 27th of 2023. You have told the court repeatedly you got no reasons why she wanted Fridays. She says, Todd, per our text chat, I wanted to provide you some of the factors when drafting the calendar I sent you. Please note I'm not listing them or ranking them. The school calendar, this is her reasons for Fridays, vacation and custody, aligning to 50-50 as much as possible, trying to go pure week to week on without making manual overrides or adjustments, alignment to Trisha's schedule with the kids, and desire to have a parent flow into a full week and holiday breaks. Do you remember her sending you that reasoning on June 27th? Are you denying that you received that email? Well, I'm not denying it. I just don't recall seeing that. You heard our, um, Diane Arnett today say that the boys have said that they want their schedule to be aligned with essentially their step family. I mean, though they have a close relationship, they're friends, they're close to Trisha's kids. Why would you not allow for them to have a schedule that is the same as the other children in the house? Well, I, I didn't hear Miss Arnett say that they wanted this schedule because of their siblings. I didn't hear her say that. She just said she's had the experience of transitioning kids on a Friday. That's fine. I get it. It, it. I'm still the parent of my children, just as Gwen is still the parent of our children. And I think that I have just as equal amount of voice in what their schedule is going to be, what their care is going to be, what that looks like. You think a 16 and a half year old who is driving and has his own wheels and car has a say in terms of what schedule he wants? He has a say in it, but just as a parent, doesn't mean that I can go let them drink alcohol and, and go party until 11 o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. So why, when the 16 and a half year old asked you to try both 
try Sundays, try Fridays. Why? You said I respected that he was bold and brave. You said brave. And, and yet you still denied it. Why did you do that to your son? I didn't do it to my son. I, I was willing to try that. And then uh, Miss Throckmorton hired you. And she said she hired you to be a third party objective person in, in our council. But you sent over a Title 11 and there was no paperwork around that. So I had to hire an attorney to make sure I wasn't misinterpreting something. And so I thought Gwen and I could have gone down this path without having to go through a court process. I wanted us to be able to be amicable and adults. I was willing to try things, but she hired you. So then I had to hire an attorney and I had to put all of this on pause. But we're not talking about attorneys. The question was, sir, your son and you lauded his bravery came to you and said, I want a different schedule. I want to try both. Why did you say no to a son that's going to be graduating in a couple of years and is great service oriented band? I mean, by all accounts, your children are amazing. And so you could have a voice. And so why did you not let his voice be heard by you? Well, I did let his voice be heard. And an did adult- you honor it? Well, a child may come to you and say, I want this or I want that. It doesn't mean that they they get it. Let's talk about Diane. You disengaged with Diane long ago and did not go to any more of the therapeutic sessions, correct? Yeah, she didn't offer and I did not attend. And you didn't Ms. pay 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 her. Well, because she's out of per the decree, it was going to be agreed upon that if anyone was in network, we would both be subsidizing and paying for that position. Ms. Arnett, I did not have a say in that. Gwen made that decision. And so thus she got to make that payment for them. Ms. Lonergan, that's time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Beck. I will at this point pass away, Mr. Arnett. All right. Mr. Sam, anything further? Um, just briefly, uh, Mr. Throckmorton, when your son came to you and expressed his opinion as to what the transition period would be. Um, did you factor his opinion into your decision? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's important for me and I listen to my children. I want them to have a voice. I want them to be strong, capable men. And I sh also shared with them, I thank you for your opinion. It, this schedule isn't conducive for you or for me. And it doesn't mean that he's bad for voicing his opinion. I want him to. But sometimes the parents still have to make the decision. No further questions. All right. Thank you. Uh, so at this time, do you rest? I do, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Londrigan, anything further or are you rest and close? I, I don't. It's, I'll leave it up to you on whether or not. I don't have any other witnesses, but if you wanted us to make a brief closing or if you're just ready to roll. Um, I am ready to roll. So I just want to make sure you both rest and close. Yes. yes, Your Honor, I rest and close. I rest and close, Your Honor. Okay. And Ms. Londrigan, I understood your statement at the beginning of this hearing to be that your client is withdrawing the request that I confer with the children. Yes, Ms. Arnett was present and told you his desires. All right. Um, and I take it there wasn't a request from you or your client, Mr. Sam? Uh, no, Your Honor. We were okay. on a list. So... Um, I am ready to roll, and based on the evidence that I've heard and uh, the pleadings on file, I find that it is in the best interest of the children to switch their possession schedule to week on, week off, with the transition day being Friday. Um, I, um, I think y'all have agreed that if it's Friday, that it's five o'clock. Is that right? I think I said school dismissal because okay. that's what they're currently doing. School dismissal. Um, then um, sounds like y'all have an agreement on how to work the reset provision if they're um, with one parent for two weeks or more. Yes, Your Honor. That's what I'm understanding from Mr. Sant this morning. All right. So, um, Ms. Londrigan, when can you get us a proposed order? Or Within, when can you get Mr. Sam a proposed order? Uh, by the time you you come back from lunch. We already have an order. I would just need to edit it very briefly. It would take five, ten minutes. All right. So how long would you like to review it and determine whether you have any objection to the form? We would only need two or three days. 
All right, so um, let's do this. If there is uh, an agreement after two or three days, you'll get me the agreed as to form order by next Monday. If there's any negotiating back and forth about the form um, and y'all are unable to work it out, then uh, Mr. Stamp, I want you to get me a redlined uh, version of Ms. Londrigan's order that would show what changes you think should be made uh, to the form of the order by um, close of business on the Wednesday, the 27th, so a week from today. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, these kids sound like great kids, and um, I have no doubt that, that both parents love them very much, and um, I hope that y'all will work together to try and make this new schedule um, work for everyone, and um, so I wish you the best. And with that, y'all are dismissed. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.